Hey everyone, back again. Okay, kind of a different configuration. Uh, this would be um, backup CPU's um, Hartley circuit, uh, running off uh, the MPS A06 transistor. Uh, every value is uh, the same as he showed in the video, except um, uh, this coil here, uh, which I'm using the tap for uh, the positive feedback. Um, so I've got the ferrite in there, which uh, I've actually got two pieces. Uh, one is on that end and the other is on this end and uh, kind of adjusting the gap in between. So we've got um, 18 LEDs and those are blazing. Uh, we've got 6 volts, 69 milliamps going in. Um, this is a pretty interesting compression wave type uh, waveform. Um, and you get that by um, going through different different time divisions. So that's too far out. That's a pretty good shot. But that's actually uh, kind of a what's the word? There's a lot of uh, miniature waves in between there, but it's resembling. Uh, so that's as far as my scope goes, and uh, it's roughly three megahertz. I'm trying to keep it out of all the radio bands and stuff, but uh, it's kind of tricky. But uh, yeah, you can see that uh, strange compression and expansion thing going on. And if I pause it, you'll see the uh, frequency is higher in places and lower in other places. Yeah, you can see it's a little lower here, higher there. So it kind of does this back and forth. Uh, it's really interesting. And there's a video by Dr. Stifler uh, titled uh, PSEC number three or something like that, where he shows uh, his waveform. And it's, uh, it's really similar. It kind of does this phasing in and out. Uh, there's a cool shot. Anyway, uh, the biggest thing about this was the ferrite, for one. So I'll adjust uh, that rod in and out. So it's really tight. And uh, so this is in tune. out of tune. So, being out of tune raises the current, drops the light. Being in tune lowers the current and raises the light. So that was adjusting with the ferrite, and this is here just as a kind of a, a indicator out in the middle of the middle of space. Um, but here, this metal plate is how I'm taking the power. So the coil is free to do its thing, and there's about a gap, uh, about the width of this uh, piece of aluminum, actually in between uh, the can and the aluminum. It's about the size of the gap. Um, so now I'll just uh, adjust the plate closer. So that's obviously not as good. I'll move the plate away. Too far. OK, 
Okay, so that was just uh, moving this board of wood so that I could adjust the angle of the plate. Okay. Um, I've also got it, uh, the output um, going to this uh, to match the impedance on the output. So I'll take off. Um, this is just going to this black wire all coiled up and just going out uh, out here. So I'll remove that and we'll watch the current and the light if we can. No. So I'll, I'll take off, make a note of the uh, current there. So I'll remove the wire. Okay, so that's just going up to the load there. Okay, and the current, 83 milliamps. I'll plug it back on. There's our light. Current went down. And so I'm just going to experiment with uh, how many lights I can put on this thing before it loads it. And uh, like the doctor said, uh, do that and then run some numbers. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's a BMW coil that I'm using. Uh, there's about 198 micro Henry's on this one. Um, I could be wrong about that. It, it might just be around 120. I can't remember if it's. Uh, yeah, that coil is 198. This one's about 117 micro Henry's. The circuit called for 100 micro Henry's. Um, and uh, it uh, seemed like I had uh, kind of a brighter spot right around here. But then adjusting the ferrite, um, the whole length of the uh, resonator is is being used um, so anyway it's uh, kind of similar to the SEC uh, and everything that was the point of uh, of the uh, backup CPU's video uh, was that he wanted to see if he could get the same effect as the SEC uh, one wire circuit using the Hartley um, except the, uh, the the duty end on this circuit is the emitter and um, I'm not sure if the emitter is better than the collector at uh, running the circuit, but um, I really like this circuit. It uh, really is uh, running nice. Uh, good current going in and whatnot. Um, except I want to try a coal pits um, oscillator where it taps the uh, between two capacitors rather than between the coil. Um, where you're, where you're subject to uh, mutual inductance and that sort of thing, possibly putting your system out after extended times. Um, another thing that's cool is um, if you look up um, Panacea's uh, SEC PDF, they show that, uh, well, just a lot of information. Um, and you see this kind of a fuzzy line changes when I get close to it, but I'll try to, this fuzzy, um, fuzziness that's, you know, looks like on the wave there, uh, supposedly that's, uh, it looks like that when you're resonating with, uh, the lattice, what he calls it, or the local frame, um, yeah, people have different names for it, uh, the ambient background, uh, zero point, and all that sort of thing. But anyway, Dr. Stifler calls it the lattice, which uh, connects basically all energy. Um, the evidence of it is uh, in lightning storms that we see all the time. Um, anyway, it's pretty interesting. Pretty easy circuit to build. It was nice having these coils, but um, you can just use component inductors. Um, but I just like these because I have them and uh, wasn't really doing much with them. So, uh, yeah, they provide an excellent cue and um, it's a great coil for tapping. That's what he said.
but um, it was big to uh, <clears throat> have this plate which adjusts the capacitance as well as um, being the conduit for uh, the load. So you can see um, the wire that comes out the bottom here is where I've got the wire inside there. So you can see it comes out here, runs up to the load, and the load is uh, nine LEDs on either side um, going one way and then the other uh, row going the other way. So it's kind of like a, a self-contained Avramenko plug. Um, in other tests though, I haven't tried it with this yet, uh, it was actually better to go with the Avramenko plug, <clears throat> the uh, two, two diodes forward and back. Um, so I'm going to test that out, um, but I wish I had it running right now, but I blew the transistor. Uh, this was a, a jewel thief that I had running into a resonator, and then it was running these lights, both both rows, and then uh, the <clears throat> sorry the ground wire that I was going into as a virtual ground, uh, kind of like this one here. It was connected to the Hartley as well, and these lights came on as well. Um, it was uh, running a little higher current than I would have liked, and that obviously cooked the transistor, but uh, it was really neat to, to run this and see all those go on, and then these came on for some reason, going kind of backwards into into its uh, system. But uh, yeah, I'll post a uh, link to the video where I got the circuit, he's a really cool guy. So, if anything, um, yeah, in the ferrite was uh, huge for tuning, and uh, the adjustable plate that uh, basically could go straight to ground, uh, but in this case it's um, the lights are in between the, the plate and the ground. And that's the best way to uh, take power so far. And actually, the uh, the environment around the coil when it's running the load is uh, is a lot weaker than when the load's not connected. Um, and uh, I was testing out on a little shortwave radio. Um, I can find a couple places where uh, it's uh, kind of creating a almost a silence in uh, the radio. It's like it's uh, so smooth that it's like a carrier wave, and there's like very little noise. Um, it's uh, better on the magnifier setup I've got at home, but I'll uh, show you guys that in a different video. All right, have a good one.